And a good, good morning, Birds fans. Appreciate you streaming in here with us on Birds 365 on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. It's Mac and Mac, John McMullen and Jordy McDonald. They hang with you for the next couple hours. J Mac, it's the last week of March. We're more than a month away from the draft. Free agent has slow, slowed down precipitously, but there's a lot to talk about today because a lot of very important NFL people are meeting in Orlando for the owners' meetings. Uh, you will hear from over the course. Now it's the, the list is already shrinking over the next two days. Um, Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni, and Jeffrey Laurie, coach, general manager, and owner of the team all will speak. And the GM got to go first. Howie Roseman spoke yesterday to the assembled media, both local and national. And surely you knew this was coming. He talked about the, the new Eagles, the players that he acquired during the offseason. And so, had some interesting things to say about uh, a lot of them. The first of which was Saquon Barkley, who's a special player. That was the word of the day. Special. special. He's a weapon. Special. I hear. I keep hearing weapon and special. With yes. Saquon. Special was heavy yesterday. Those from Howie Roseman. And I, I'm buying. Um, we'll know when he gets out there. We'll know when the Eagles start running plays. We'll know when we get a good five, six game grasp of Kellen Moore and what his Eagle is go, Eagles offense is going to look like. But uh, in other words, we'll hear plenty over the next however many months leading up to the season and in season as well as bell cow. Do you know where that one came from, Johnny? I don't know the background, the history of when a running back is the number one guy and gets more than his fair share of carries. He is known as a bell cow back. You know the history of that particular football phrase? Well, the cow with the bell on is the lead. So is the lead. I okay. assume. I assume it. Yeah, that's been around. Sorry, forever, uh, I know old McDonald had a farm e i e i o, but I didn't know that the the lead. The, the, the lead cow has yeah. to wear a bell. Um, yeah, that that one's been around for longer than me. So yes, it's been around for, for a long time. Um, yeah, unlike hip drop, which I find ironic because I got yelled at by people. Oh, it did. Oh, they just they didn't do it ten years ago. I wasn't aware. Everybody knew when everybody woke up a decade ago. They just started started since the NFL didn't label it till last year. Right, boy, it's easy to put a freaking blindfold over these some of these people but anyway i digress and in saquon's case um yeah I, I i mean look i i've been above board about this we disagree myself i'm talking about the eagles on the evaluation of the player they think the player is special and as that's the word and if he is it's going to work great um, so hopefully they're evaluate then the valuation, the contract doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and to be honest, it doesn't matter anyway with the, with the salary cap exploding and all that, not only this year, but, uh, projected to be years down the road, it's not going to matter other than you're going to get, it's going to affect you on the field. And that's the bigger part of it anyway. Um, are they getting this right? I don't think they are. Now I know you're on the other side of the yeah. fence, and uh, that's fun. And a lot of people are. Organization on this. That's uh, it, only time will tell. We'll find yeah. out exactly how good Saquon Barkley is. And one of the differences you and I have in uh, all of the streamers we have here and calls I take on WIP people at me on um, Twitter, most people think Saquon Barkley has gone backwards that he had this unbelievable rookie year looking like he's going to be an MVP candidate every single year. And he hasn't reproduced that since. And the numbers say that is correct. Why has that been the case? Could be the big injury that he had. And he just isn't quite the player he used to be. And you have to acknowledge that as a possibility, or you can look at the players around him. And I think the running backs are uh, extraordinarily tied to the quality of the team around them. Uh, offensive line, other weapons, your quarterback. That's what I'm going to hang my hat on. And it seems to me like that's what the Eagles are hanging their hat on. The Giants haven't been real good. Uh, they, that rookie year, he had a legitimate quarterback. And Eli Manning, even though he was an older and also himself declining, 
He's no better than Daniel Jones at all that the Giants have thrown out there the last several years. Put him behind an Eagle offensive line with an Eagle passing game with an Eagle legitimate franchise quarterback. And I think all of a sudden Saquon Barkley is going to look a lot more like that rookie Saquon Barkley than the last couple of years in Giant Blue. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any way that can possibly happen for a couple reasons. And only one is the injury. But uh, also, you know, if you study the history of running backs, it just the level of touches he's had over the years, um, enormous, uh, whether he's having a good year, bad year, indifferent year, injured year, he's at 1,500 touches. And people look at his age and say, well, it's not too bad, 27. But it's not about the age. It's about the touches as far as I'm concerned. And by the way, how he, at least it, to his credit, brought that up he said he knows you know you got to keep an eye on it but again they think he's different they think he's special they think you know his uh the way he takes takes care of his body makes him different from others and won't affect him as great uh, okay let, let let's see um so that to me is a bigger part the injury is a big part i don't i don't think he's the same explosiveness but that's you know i've seen and even the numbers don't bother me because I've seen above average backs over the past two years. Miles Sanders, good player, not great player, good player. 1,269 yards, 4.9 yards per carry. DeAndre Swift, good player, not great player. 10,069 uh, uh, yards, 4.6 yards per carry. You know, that's that's the floor, you know. Okay, stats why. I want to see the presence. I want to see this presence making things easier for everybody else. And that's far more esoteric and far more difficult to define. But when you watch the San Francisco 49ers, and that's what people keep bringing up, and including the Eagles, you know, sort of behind, they think he's that type of player. That's the type of presence I want to see. And that bar is going to be really, really difficult to reach. And I always talk really? about why, why do you say that? Well, because I think there's only one. And I think number two is not close. Right. But you, as you said, back. esoteric. We're not talking mm. about comping stats for stats, uh, no. average yard per K. That You're right. He's not going to reach the level of McCaffrey. McCaffrey's here. And then everybody else, including Saquon Barkley, is down here. But that esoteric leadership, do you not think that Saquon Barkley? I, I don't can... think it's leadership. I think it's presence on the field. Presence. I, I think, presence. Sorry. I, 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 I think I, I misquoted you. I apologize for that. Saquon you don't is think a... he can be that kind of presence? I don't. Really? There's only there's only one that's been that type of presence. Um I don't. I mean, if he were that I... type of presence, you would see more signs of it, even with a bad supporting cast. You would see more signs of it. Um, as you did in Carolina with Christian McCaffrey, you saw more sign. I mean, there's a guy who had whatever 1600 yards and a uh, thousand yards receiving when he was healthy in a, in a average Carolina team. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, rookie Saquon Barkley. Yes. Pre ACL Saquon Barkley. Yes. To a certain degree, not to that level, but to a certain degree, he might be second, might be third might be in the conversation. But the guy with 1,500 touches and all that wear and tear, I hope I'm wrong, but, man, history history is not kind to those players. And I, I, there have been some great, great running backs over the years. Um, Sean Alexander, uh, DeMarco Murray, one here, uh, had a phenomenal year, and, and, the, and they took so much tread on his tire in 12 months he was basically not the same player. Same thing with Sean Alexander in his MVP season. Never the same. I, the, 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 the wear and tear, on the, and that's why the position has been devalued uh, so, so greatly, is so impactful on this position, maybe more than any other. Um, I, I, the, the, the assumption that, I don't know, he's kind of, different physically or different and and it's not going to affect him as much as Ezekiel Elliott or Sean Alexander or DeMarco Murray or players like that. 
I just, you know, weren't those guys special? I, 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 you know, I, I think the Eagles are going away from their analytical approach with this signing. And when it comes to injuries and when it comes to that position and when it comes to uh, shelf life, I think those analytics have been proven out to be pretty rock solid over the years. Yeah, and I'll give you credit because others have said this. You haven't. Oh, they made a three-year commitment to him with all that training. No, no. It's not a three-year commitment. No. It's a two at most. And don't kid yourself. If Saquon Barkley comes out this year, and not only is the tread off the tire, the tire runs flat, the Eagles will move away from him in one year. They'll take their hit like they always do, and they'll go into somewhere down the road. It's a year to year. This league has become such a year to year thing, except for one position. And I mean, one quarterback. Every other player, every other contract, even if you give out a large signing bonus, a big guarantee, not uh, across the board. Uh, we, we always have fun with Kirk Cousins. Shame on his agent this year. He didn't get the whole contract guaranteed. He only got like 140 out of 180 guaranteed. He's the best it. in the business, Mike McCartney, man. That's, you know, Mike's great because he, uh, Kirk Cousins' agent, real quick, he, he announces his signings himself, so I love that. He doesn't go through the information, information broker brokers. Part. No, no. So, I, so I love him for that. And then for whatever reason, it became a, a shtick over the years. People think he's Mike McCarthy and legitimately think he's Mike McCarthy. And I'll tweet something out trying to tweet people. And they say, why aren't you paying attention to the game? Why aren't you working on It's hilarious. And it's become this thing. I think some people are in on the joke, but early on, um, yeah, for whatever reason, people thought he was Mike McCarthy. And right, it's but he's hilarious. he's slipping because he did not get every dollar guaranteed as he has done previously. Well, you know, because... and 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 Mike's defense, the guy's thirty six, coming off an Achilles, so he hey. did pretty well. He did, did pretty well. Did they did they say Houdini is now forty five? He just can't be as dynamic a magician as he was before. No, they expected Houdini to be Houdini, so I'm going to hold him to those same standards. Um, that's it. Quarterback, that's the position. E even the best wide receivers don't get there. And the Jefferson deal is going to be very intriguing this year, how much he's going to get guaranteed. But the, the league at this time, you don't, there's one year. It's one year at a time. No, so we'll I, find I, out what Saquon can do next year. The, maybe, the he only, is, okay, the, maybe he is the second coming of McCaffrey. Maybe he is all of a sudden look like an, uh, looking like an old man. If it's the latter... Okay, Eagles pay a price, they move on, and they get another running back. They draft a running back. They Here, here's the only thing that bothers me about the contract, I, I, because now that they've signed the contract, it was surprising to me. That's different. Uh, because well, of do the you Eagles. actually think Saquon Barkley was going to give him less than Swift did? No, no. So I'm it's got to it, be about the contract. No, I'm saying it was surprising to me the Eagles paid that contract to any running back name, not named um, – Christian McCaffrey. How, however, that's the that's the only thing. That then I turn the page on the contract. Howie, for some reason, is trying to spin it like, oh no, no, we haven't devalued the position. Yeah, that that, 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 that bothers that bothers me a little bit. That, and he goes back to Brian Westbrook, which he wasn't even involved with. Exactly. And that might be a different freaking century. It might as well be. In the NFL, things move. And then Shady McCoy. Nobody's talking about Howie Roseman 1.0 anywhere. We're talking about Howie Roseman 2.0, who, by the way, helped shape the entire NFL's philosophy on this position by building two Super Bowl rosters by not paying that position. He helped shape the thinking. So don't give me that bullshit. Yeah, that was that that's the only part that bothers me from the contract standpoint. Oh, you changed. And you change because you think the guy's different and special and just say that. And it's fine to me. That was him trying to, you're right, spin the situation. No, come on. How, a decade ago? Really? As, as you and I have just spoken about here in the last 10 minutes, the, the, the NFL changes on a dime every day. Yeah. And to say, whoa, but look at what we did a decade ago with Shady McCoy. A decade ago, a decade ago is 100 years in NFL life. That yeah. was, and pure. then he went back to Westbrook even before that. Okay, Howie. So, so, 
own the signing. You you made the signing. If it works, you're going to look like a genius again. And it, to me, it's not about valuation now. It's about evaluation. And that's where we disagree. Now, hey, Eagles fans are fired up about it. I hope I'm wrong. I haven't seen it. And we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for Saquon to have a big year. He talked about a whole bunch of other players that they've also acquired some interesting things uh, about uh, Bourne. And uh, I can't believe that he compared him to a player that the Eagles could have gotten and chose not to. So let's let's take the photocopy rather than the original. Uh, the the Wish.com version. Well, in his defense, we're talking about Zach Bourne and Andrew Van Ginkle. He didn't bring up Andrew Van Ginkle by name, but you know people are going to understand what you're talking about. Now, Van Ginkle signed a two-year deal, pretty good deal. I forget. I'm trying to look it up. Uh, 20. Uh, it was eight, got 10, 20, 10 but, yeah, so pretty good deal. Um, again, the devil's in the details. It could very well be like Saquon. It's not a three-year deal. It's a two-year deal at most. The Van Ginkle deal could be a one-year deal. I have not seen what the guaranteed money is. So yeah, it comes to plus, the after you know, one year. the assumption is the Eagles didn't try to get him. We don't know that. I, You know, he is – he signed with Minnesota. He's from Iowa, so he's from that area. He went to Wisconsin, you know. He maybe wants to go back to the Midwest. Who, who knows? Maybe he didn't like Big Banjo. There's a million things. But what, why you bring up him coming off a, a good season, a career season, um, who played a lot and who's projected to play even more next year to a player who's not even projected to play that much makes no sense to me. Because um, yeah. people are going to make that comparison. And Bank Inkle is going to be better because he's going to play more, mm -hmm. number one. So he's going to get a bunch of sacks. And, everybody, well, gonna have and Zach Bond's going to play maybe only because of injury. Why are you bringing that up? Why are you saying that? That's like an unforced error. I, I mean, would that's agree. That's what that is. That was a stretch and a reach. So he didn't agree with everything, how he said. I'm on board with Saquon being a bell cow back. Uh, Johnny Mack, not so much. Let's get a third opinion on this. Oh, one. he's going to be the bell cow back. I'm not. It might, might. So I'll ask you, Johnny. A worthwhile get the, bell cow back yeah. if you need me to so, clarify. I just gave you Miles's numbers and DeAndre's numbers. So where do we start with Saquon Barkley? That's part of it. Like, what what's he going to do? That's so much more impressive than those two guys, other than in the in, in theory in the receiving aspect. Because you got to start at thirteen hundred running the ball. You got to start at thirteen hundred yards and what five yards a carry for him to be considered worthy of the bell cow back and the contract he got. Well, I'm, I'm looking at total, total yards from scrimmage. Um, however, so it breaks out. It's whether talking about, and so receiving. it's because it's going to be really difficult. That's my point. Miles is 1269, 4.9 yards per carry. That was miles a season two years ago. That's pretty good. That, that that's right, but what what, what 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 were Miles receiving yards? No, that's not my point. That point is well, so it's gonna happen. I'm giving you my point. My point is I am not going to solely compare Saquon Barkley to Miles and to Deshaun uh DeAndre Swift by what their average yard per carry was. Okay, so time. so I'm talking uh, about big picture. I think I hope I'm believing because that's what I was told yesterday, he's going to be a weapon. And weapon includes catching a ball out of the backfield. So in judging how good uh, Saquon Barkley is for the Eagles this year, I'm going to look at all yards that he gets from the line of scrimmage, passing, receiving yards. No, that's and fair. Yards. I have no problem with that. I have less confidence if that's the way it's going to go because if he's got 1,100 yards rushing, say, and he's got to be up at seven, 800 receiving, um, yeah, I'm even less confident that this is going to work out. I'm even less confident. Well, what, was, what was Miles' total? Uh, rushing plus passing, receiving yards. Not not talking about Miles' receiving. Miles wasn't a good receiver. Now, Did we just go about, through this? 
I'm asking you a question. If you have it in front of me, please read me the numbers. What were his total yards? Miles, two years ago, yeah. went to Well, Super Bowl, I feel the reason. plus receiving yards. What was the number? I, it, a, it's not in front of me. The reason oh, I'm that I day in the you way. You gave me the Miles rushing yards. So I figured you had the Because I know the rushing of. yards because, because I was the one trying to make a point, and you are misinterpreting my point. That's why I'm not. Miles is not a good receiver. Now, DeAndre was supposed to be a good receiver, was a good receiver in Detroit, oh, yeah. and that didn't pan out remotely, remotely with the Eagles' offense last year. Now, people will go down, well, now it's Kellen Moore, and Kellen Moore has a history. All right, he's got a history of cutting Austin Eckler from 100 to 50. Um, now, there were some issues with contract and injury as well, so that factors into it. But I say it all the time. Anytime I hear about getting guys in space who aren't receivers in March, I roll my eyes because I've seen the history of this league and the history of this organization and the history of most organizations. It always turns out to be a big, flat fart in church, basically, is what it ends up being. So that was my point about the receiving aspect. Now, if he turns into an 800-yard receiver, I'm with you. That's phenomenal. What I'm trying to say is I don't think that's going to happen, which is part of my evaluation of the, of the whole situation. So then I go back to the running game and say, it better start at 1,305 yards a carry, which ain't easy. It's possible, but it ain't easy. Right. And maybe you don't understand my point the same way you say I don't understand yours. I don't care. I think that it's very fair. And I promise Tommy Lawler, we're going to get to you in a second. Is he watching? He's smiling. I hope he's smiling. Yeah, yes, he he's okay. Thank you, Tommy, for your patience. Um, I care about his total yards from the line of scrimmage. If he gets him rushing it, that's great. If he gets him receiving it, that's great. If we're going to compare him to what the Eagles have gotten from their number one back over the past two years, if he doesn't get to the Miles Sanders 1,269-yard number, but he catches the ball for 600 yards as compared to Miles, who caught it for 78, and he gets 500 more receiving yards, I'm not going to go, oh, shit, he came up with that many last yards. Yeah, but Charity, Sanders. I, I understand. I, I understand. See, I understand you're talking about production. I understand you only care about total yards from scrimmage. I'm asking you for your evaluation. Are you? Do you think he's going to get 800 yards receiving? Do you think he's going to get 1,100 yards rushing? I'm saying he ain't getting 800 yards receiving, so he better get more rushing because I, I've seen this team and this organization and their bullshit get people involved with manufactured touches, and it never comes to pass. And until I see it, I'm not believing it. Yes, I think he can get over 1,500 yards combined. Easy. Um, and that's more than Miles, and that's more than DeAndre Swift. So that's so I'm asking you, that's my question. It's split it. 1,500, split it. What's he getting? Rushing, receiving. Mm, split it right on the even numbers, 1,000 and, and 500. There's your 1,500. you will get 500 yards receiving. If you think that won't be happening, okay, we'll find out when the season rolls out. I think they will throw to the back more this year because it is Saquon Barkley. So I think he'll get over 1,000 yards rushing and over 500 yards receiving. And you don't think that would be spun as a disappointment if Saquon Barkley has, say, 1,005 rushing yards after a season – after two seasons of Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift, average to above average players, above average, I shouldn't say that. above average, you don't think that will be spun as a disappointment if he's got a thousand yards receiving and 500 yards, excuse me, a thousand yards rushing, 500 yards receiving? All right, you, to, to make it non disappointing, you want me to get to 1100 and 600? Oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm just asking. You're talking what, what, yeah, that's my point. 1500 yards. If he's 1500 yards, he will have uh reached the valuation of the contract. I think he'll cover that compared I to everybody being, else. In the I, NFL. I think you're being very kind. I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with you, but I, 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 I'm fine with your thought that that's that that's fine. I, I, I even think that's possible. 
I don't I, think people I think are going to be happy th- with thumbs that. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's thumbs up for me. I'm not going thumbs down or I'm not going neutral. I'm going thumbs up. Is it, oh, my God, he's in the MVP conversation? Of course not with 1,500 total yards. But I'm trying to be fair about that. I go, I think he's going to rush for 1,500 and catch it for 700, John. 2,200 yards total. I could throw on my Eagles uh, sunglasses. Well, and, I'm not asking you to do that. Numbers. I'm asking for your honest opinion. I gave and, you my honest opinion, and, and I will and give it a thumbs up afterwards. Is that special? Ooh, now we got to use Howie's word. Um, That's Howie's word. That ain't my word. Yeah, he did. He set the bar higher. Um, it's borderline special. It's not not 100 for special. Yeah, and everybody's going to define Howie's word the way they want to, including Howie himself. All right. We need Tommy Lawler's definition on the Eagles for the upcoming season. Uh, he joins us next. Tommy Lawler here on Birds 365.